Vincent Everts at CIO Day. I'm talking to Jonas Seracker. He's a philosopher and gave a presentation here at CIO Day. And I understand you're Norwegian and you hate Norwegians. <laughs> That's true, yeah. It's too cold, it's too expensive, people are too similar, there's not enough weirdness in Norway and that's what I like about Netherlands. Yeah, so we're talking about your uh, happiness research in a minute, but um, you also talked about big data and about privacy. I mean, what, when we, what can we expect about <laughs> that combination? Well, I think the big problem is that we're expecting to be private less and less. And the less we expect to be private, the easier it is to just overrule our privacy. Uh, and when we start seeing things like insurance companies and banks uh, using big data to put you in certain categories, you get a lot of false positives, you get a lot of false negatives, and then it really starts affecting people's everyday life. And that's okay, so the big data people have about us are, is really terrible. It basically produces a lot of wrong results. For instance, there's a lot of racism going into the big data, and then you get racism out of the big data as well. So if you don't get a loan because you're black, yeah. uh, it's because you are put in a certain profile, and that profile is based on old big data, which is in turn based on years of racism and discrimination. So we get racism back because the computer says no now. Oh yeah, so that objective big data, which says that this category of people, like ZZ payers or black people or something like that, it's completely false, and all the false assumptions which we have on the on our brain also end up in uh, big data. Exactly, exactly. And now we make decisions on that, and we make racist decisions without being racist, uh, and that's the big problem. And that's what you're researching. Yeah, that's one of them. Yeah. Okay. So what can we do about it? Is there something? Um, is there so some filter we can put on top of it? <laughs> There's lots of things to do. I talked a bit here today about um, making sure that your database can't be used for those kinds of purposes. What I actually think is more important is just consumers being more cautious. And you saw when the ING uh, thought about starting to use purchase history. Uh, yeah, please do. Please do and be a better bank for me because you analyze my spending behavior. But that is a big problem as well because you might start getting conscious about using your card certain places because it might look weird out of context. Yeah, well, I'm not afraid. I mean, uh, but I mean, I'm not a minority. Which, if I would be a black kid out of the uh, out of a, a bad area, I would probably be a lot more suspicious about society in general. Right, but imagine. Okay, so take a scenario. Imagine that your grandmother wants you to go buy a pack of cigarettes for her, but the moment you do so, the insurance company sees that you have bought cigarettes, and you have been lying to them. Is their conclusion? So we start getting worried about how is this going to look out of context and so on, and that is my big concern, really. Now let's talk about this privacy uh, awareness. Is there some number we can put on our privacy awareness that we are getting less and less concerned? Uh, I'm not sure about number, but certainly less and less and less, yeah. And, and people are more and more willing. I think it's true, but I would like to objectify that. And you are from the University of Twente, and you're doing research, so you should be able to objectify that for me. Well, for Give me a number. <laughs> I can't give you a number because it differs so enormously from from country to country and from generation to generation, younger generations are much more willing to, to basically trade their private information for anything that, the price, if the price is right, they're willing to do it. Yeah. Uh, certainly if the job pays a good salary, they give up privacy entirely. Okay. So the best number I can give you is actually, I do this test in my classes. Yeah. And 10 years ago, maybe 50% would give up their privacy for a well-paid job. Now it's almost like 90% would say, yeah, if the price is right, I can, they can put an RFID chip in my head, then I don't care. Yeah. So it would be great. We're here at the CIO dinner, uh, 400 people here. It would be great to do it with these people and test it every day. Let's talk about happiness research, which you do to yourself. You also think that uh, you know, Denmark is one of the happiest countries in the world and Netherlands is now like number three. And the Norwegians, they have everything you possibly could want. They have maximum uh, employment, they have money, they have, they have no debt. They must be the happiest people in the world. Uh, they're really not. Uh, certainly if you ask them sort of in the moment, like, do you feel happy right now? Uh, they don't really score that well. And it's, uh, Scandinavia also has an issue with suicide and depression because when you have when society gives you everything and you're still depressed, you have nobody to blame but yourself, which actually makes it worse. So how do you use your big data and uh, the, re the happiness research? Well, the main thing I do is to try to look at the happiness research and figure out, can we use technology to make people happier? So things that make people happy in real life, so to speak, can we use technology to reproduce that somehow? 
So to give you an example to make it more concrete, uh, being social and sharing experiences is one of the things that really make people happy. But does the same hold for Facebook and video games and virtual worlds? Being social there, does it have the same effect? So those are the kinds of questions I'm looking at. Oh my God, if I'm social in Facebook, it has no effect. And if I'm social in real life, I become happier? Uh, if you are of a certain generation, yeah. Because we grew up with like a genuine response, it's sort of a pat on the back and a good smile. Uh, now, younger generation are much more happy with a like and a comment. It doesn't do the same thing for us, it does much more for younger generations. How does it work with uh, employees? How can we get the employees happy in our company and get them more connected to our cause? Right. Okay, this is a bit of a long story, I'll try to make it short. Um, so the two most important things that most sort of really happy people tend to report is that they feel they have identified something they're good at and get to do that. And also that they use that strength for something they perceive to be meaningful. So there's a bit of a too much attention to improve our weaknesses. I think we should let people do what they're doing. Everybody talks, let's not do that. Don't work on your weaknesses. Find something where you can get, find your strength in. Yeah. And it, oh, if it's meaningful, that ha helps too. That helps enormously. And uh, the company has a lot to do with that. Like if you have a sense that you work for a company that does a lot of good in the world, that increases your pride, your loyalty, your happiness, your creativity, all kinds yeah, of Yeah, but I mean, isn't it true that if you are appreciated in the company by doing whatever stupid job you're doing, that that uh, uh, contributes a huge amount to the happiness? The company doesn't have to do anything useful, but you have to be appreciated by the company. Well, but if you have this sort of sneaky suspicion that whatever you do doesn't really amount to much, anybody could do this job, that takes away a lot from the happiness. Ah, the individual is so smart. He or she can get uh, close to his norms. Okay. Well, thank you very much, uh, Johnny. It was uh, really interesting. Where can we find about your research? Which website? Uh, just look at uh, sudaker.com. Uh, <laughs> my last name.com. We'll give you the links to the relevant places. Yes. But also look at University of Twente and the Department of Philosophy there. Okay. Thank you very much. This was uh, CIO Day TV at the CIO Day dinner. Thank <laughs> you.